the fees per semester is about a lakh. What are the average particular displacements both in B.Tech and management? We want to increase our impact in society. In research, our focus now is on multiple, you know, AI, ML, healthcare, energy and climate, smart manufacturing, in each of these domains. What about the fun activities here in IIT Delhi? So we have a center of excellence in quantum technologies, cyber security, we are uh, working on uh, all, uh, many of these cutting edge areas. We have master's program in it. We are planning to start a master's program in robotics. My BTEC and PhD both are from the country. So I, I know and I, I believe that our education system is comparable with the best in the world. What is Endowment Fund and how is the alumni uh, supporting it? So we've always been getting support from the alumni. The Endowment Management Fund that we created is a way in order, is one initiative which uh, where alumni themselves are helping us in this process of getting funds and we have founders and we are looking at uh, basically some of our successful alumni are giving back significant amounts of funding. We are also having uh, dialogues related to, so the idea is to create a corpus and use the interest from that corpus. Okay. And, uh, the, and then of course the alumni have, different alumni sometimes have uh, different passions. So someone wants to support sports, someone wants to support students who are, uh, you know, who can, who need funding. And there are others who want to support separate areas. So we have a school of AI which is funded by an alumnus. Okay. Uh, we have some scholarships funded by alumnus. And as I told you, the sports facility, we have, we are thinking of uh, upgrading all the hostels. So there is a significant requirement for funds going forward and many global institutes, the alumni and endowment funding is a significant proportion of the total. We are now going to a situation where we can see an increasing trend and we are talking now in terms of tens and hundreds of crores. So it is something where it can make a difference going forward. Because uh, one of the challenges of higher education is funding. You know, right. we, we uh, we provide good quality education, but we want to we provide that education at reasonable costs, so that it is still it is still one of the most affordable engineering educations anywhere in the world. How much affordable is IIT Delhi? So I tell you, for an undergraduate education, the fees per semester is about a lakh, so it's two lakhs for a year. Okay. Okay, that's of course only the tuition fees and of course stay and other things. But uh, also we have within that also, if there is, if the parental income or the family income is less, then we have many, many scholarships. Okay. So basically the thing is that no one who is, uh, who is meritorious will be denied education because of finance. So this is only merit-based scholarship? Which? The scholarships? Scholarships are merit come means. Okay. All, all means based. So basically, okay. if anyone has a problem in paying the fees, mm. we do have, that's not, so that's not an issue. And if you just compare globe, internationally or you compare even with any of the private universities, this is, this is actually much. I mean, in schools, people are paying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, absolutely. so this yeah, is, yeah. Uh, the... Cost of education, if you see, I mean, if you just read, it's about, probably it's about seven, seven, around seven lakhs. Around seven lakh for the year. entire beta course. Per, so two lakhs into four is the, Eight lakh is around. what they pay. Right. But I'm saying the actual, a lot of it is of course, funded by the government because okay. we're a public funded. How do you plan uh, uh, in the future years to increase this corpus of funds Obviously, uh, the institution generated, state-sponsored uh, state and alumni given as well. So, you know, overall, if I tell you in terms of a strategy, the strategy that we have is we want to increase our impact in society. And if we increase our impact in society, if our ideas and our technology is adding value, that would give us revenue. That's an overall okay. sort of okay. principle. Okay. But if you just 
if you want to think in terms of numbers, we do annually last year, we got about 450 crores of research funding. Okay. Uh, From industry? 450 crores, most of it is competitive grants, okay. many from DST and government, but where we apply for it and others are also competing in this. From industry, it may be out of that will be about 50 crores. Okay, okay so, so that's the kind of thing. In terms of continuing education programs for industry people, working professionals, we did about 20 crores. So, not very high, but these are reasonable numbers and they're on a growing trend. So overall, we think that that is one trend. Second thing is we are seeing, a, we have more than 20 centers of excellence. And each of these centers have 10 crores or more investment over a four or five year period. Many of them are funded by one industry, multiple industries. So they are in different themes and they are also working together. So I think working together with industry, CSR may be another thing, hmm. working with not just research, but actually seeing the, and then our startups, incubation, commercialization, uh, those are the kind of things. And then alumni. Okay. And uh, so it's going to be, I mean, it's a, <laughs> it's a trip, you know, but you look at any public funded institute anywhere in the world, it's always an issue. So there is unrestricted funding which they get from government, they will also get from uh, philanthropists and then there are things which you can generate. You can of course generate funds, right? but if you want to generate funds, then you have to keep charging, increasing the fees, right? Right. which we don't want to do because our Goal is. So this is a. It's a tricky. Thing. Okay. It's okay. not. There's no easy solution. But okay. our, as I said, our overall strategy is that if we can make an impact, make an impact in our region, in the country, and when we know that these things are happening and the people, then everything it's automatically, will follow. Automatically, yeah, automatically. Wonderful, sir. But it's a longer term thing. How much of the batch is getting placed, and what are the average placements, both in BTEC and management? Almost all are. People okay. are placed. Uh, the I think the placement in management is almost like hundred uh, percent. In the BTEC, uh, most of the people who sit for placements, I mean, it's I, I don't know the number exactly. Eighty-five plus are all all placed. Some are also placed subsequently. Some are you know they have they decide to do other things. Yeah. So I think our placements are really good. And they've been also improving. Um, we have a go, uh, we have a um, career services which which uh, actually uh, focuses on this office of career services. We are also providing a, um, you know the opportunity for students who want to do startups. They can go for deferred placement. Okay. So they go do the startup, try it out. Okay. They can come back after two years. <coughs> and go for Is there a limit to the years time? Uh, I think typically it's about two years. Okay. But uh, on a case by case basis, maybe. It can. But basically, you know, you don't you don't want people to sit too many times. I mean, you want right, right. to sit only once. But you give that that flexibility is there. Just to highlight anything which we have missed, uh, which so, we may have missed. So I'll tell you, we are trying to excite our undergraduates into research. Okay. And for that, we have this scheme where we have first one first year, one second year, one third year, one fourth year, a multi-year project so okay. that different senior people are in and then we have a possibility of uh, we fund it from the institute. So that's one thing that we do. The second thing that we do is if uh, some of the uh, students have an idea which has possibility of getting commercialized, we provide funding. Again, it's competitive. They have to write a proposal and, and again, so that initial part of the idea and prototype generation is actually funded. So that's that's another Okay. Uh, initiative that we have. In research, our focus now is on multiple, you know, AIML, healthcare, energy and climate, smart manufacturing. In each of these domains, 
we are trying to get a sort of plan or a white paper in terms of what all can we do together as an institute okay. and what are the impacts and where we will interface with uh, society. Uh, we have a very strong color with, uh, a, we are doing a lot of things for the services. So we have a center with DRDO and that is funding us significant amounts. We have many technologies which have, for instance, recently uh, we did this, uh, you know, we had this quantum link, quantum technology link where it is encrypted between two cities in Uttar Pradesh and it was uh, launched, There was it was in the media, there is a 100 kilometer link which was done okay. through the normal optic cable but uh, encryption. So we have a center of excellence in quantum technologies and uh, we have, we are working on uh, cyber security, we are uh, working on all, uh, many of these cutting edge areas, we have master's program in it, we are planning to start a master's program in robotics. Uh, in many of these centers of excellence, we are working along with industry on relevant problems. Uh, we've had a series of demonstrations. For instance, there's a project which we have done with Thermax and IIT Delhi to create a prototype to go from coal to methanol. And then the idea is to go to hydrogen. Okay. That prototype is actually in Thermax. Okay in the industry and it's funded by the government. Okay. So it's a tripartite. So we, we, we plan to have many more of these, you know, where we, uh, I mean, basically the idea is for our faculty and our students to provide leadership of thought and ideas. Okay. And articulate that, convince the society, move forward with it. And that's the, that's the goal. The thought leadership is the goal. Yes. Yes. Thought okay. leadership and societal impact. Mm -hmm. Apart from the, Excellence in education, excellence in research, which is sort of our foundation. It needs to be a person of caliber to uh, lead a big institution. I just wanted to know about your education journey, how education has imp impacted your life in transforming yourself. Okay, my education is, a, of course, has been always very important for me. Okay. I, I, I've done my entire education has been in Mumbai. I did my schooling and my college 11, 12 in Mumbai. Then I joined IIT Bombay for my B.Tech, 82 to 86. I worked for a year, came back and did my Ph.D. at IIT Bombay. Bombay. Yeah. So, and then I worked for a few years, then joined the faculty. I was in the faculty uh, for about 28 years. So I know I, I, am, I am educated within the country okay. completely. Okay. I've of course been, uh, I've had some ex stints visiting as a visiting faculty at Carnegie Mellon University, but my B.Tech and Ph.D. both are from the country. So I, I know and I, I believe that our education system is comparable with the best in the world. We just need to be able to attract our young people towards the education and specifically towards the higher education. And uh, we need to provide challenges for our younger people. Um, so I think this is um, in terms of IIT Delhi, we are now, it's, we are an institution. We just celebrated our Diamond Jubilee. We'll be having the closing ceremony soon. So we've, we've had a journey of 60 years. We've established ourselves both as initially as an undergraduate teaching institution and more so now as a research institution. 60% of our people today, students are postgraduates. And now we are looking at putting it all together where we are having impact. And we have a large number of, now research is uh, actually very significant. We are looking at societal impact. And so the next part of the journey is where we actually provide that leadership of thought. And we also excite students so that we can truly, you know, in our 75th year, we, we can truly help India become Atmanirbhar. If we want to do that, it has to be based on high-end 
technology, science, where we have leadership and we can compete with the best in the world. We believe we are poised to do that. Of course, there are a lot of challenges, but this is, that's, that is the, uh, the, so, you know, we have excellent students, excellent faculty and staff, and we have a good ecosystem. We are trying to now catalyze and influence the external world, get the industry on board. We've already got work with the government and the industry. So that's, that's the, it's a very exciting time to be at IIT. These are exciting times. We spoke a lot about research, studies, post-graduation and graduation here. What about the fun activities here in IIT Delhi? Every day there are lots and lots of things going on. So we have a number of different clubs. We have a cultural festival, Rendezvous. We have a technical festival called Trace. Um, we have music, dance, everything. So students are, I mean, you see the the fun thing for to be at IIT Delhi is to be a student. Okay. <laughs> and I think I think it's a it's a it's a great ecosystem and people. Uh, and do faculties have fun as well? Yeah, of course, faculties <laughs> have fun. Faculties have also been students at one point of time, and everyone <laughs> has their own uh, own idea of fun. So I think. Yeah. Wonderful, sir. Thank you for speaking with you. It was a wonderful conversation where you uh, spoke about your dream of converting the uh, IIT Delhi or taking IIT Delhi uh, to a place where it has or uh, it controls a thought leadership for the uh, kind of work it is doing in different fields, in different research areas and uh, helping to the cause of Atmanir Nirbar Bharat and Make in India as well. Thank you so much, sir. It was a pleasure you. interacting Thank with you. you.